This particular lesson has us looking at isosceles and equilateral triangles and proving different theorems about these. And also, uh, after you've proved the proven the theorems um, or corollaries, then you can apply the properties of those isosceles um, and equilateral triangles. So just as a little reminder, an isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. So if we look here at this triangle, it is isosceles. The two congruent sides are side AB is congruent to side AC. Okay, so the two sides that are we, that are congruent, we call those guys legs. So AB and AC are the legs of this isosceles triangle. And then the two angles that are across from these legs, for example, we have AB across from AB is C here, and across from AC is B. These two angles are called the base angles of the triangle. Okay. And then lastly, we have one more angle here. That angle is called the vertex angle. So those are the parts of an isosceles triangle. So if we take a look here, um, we have another isosceles triangle, but it is um, oriented a very different way. But no matter what the orientation is, these two guys are still the legs. If we were to call this triangle A, B, C, we can say that segment AC is congruent to segment BC, and those guys are still the legs of the triangle. And also angles 1 and 2 are the base angles now. Even though they're not on the bottom of the triangle, they are the angles that are across from the legs. So they would be your base angles, and 3 would be your vertex angle. So the orientation doesn't matter. All right, now from all this, we have a theorem about isosceles triangles. And that theorem says that if two sides of an isosceles of a triangle are congruent, that makes it isosceles, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So what this pretty much says is if we have AB given that AB is congruent to AC, then we should be able to show that angle B is congruent to angle C, or the base angles are congruent. So I bet you can guess what we're going to do on the next slide. We are going to prove the isosceles triangle theorem. OK, so here we go. We've got two sides that are congruent, AB and AC. And now we've got to prove that the base angles are congruent. One of the things that I want to mention about this proof is that we need it to put an auxiliary line in. That line, AX, is what we call an auxiliary line. We used an auxiliary line in another proof. I believe it was the proof of the um, uh, triangle sum theorem, but here it's going to serve a different purpose. And we also put x in there, and we're spe uh, specifying that x is the midpoint of CB because all um, any segment will have a midpoint. So we want to draw an auxiliary line in a way such that it would go through the midpoint of, um, of BC. So that's something we could add to our, um, our given statements here. So we have our statements and our reasons. Okay, so one given, we know that AB is congruent to AC, and we created X such that X is the midpoint, so this is given. So we could also say then that BX is congruent to XC, and that's by definition of a midpoint. Now I guess I could put X is the midpoint of CB. That could be something that was given. And indeed, I should put that in there. Um, 
So I should squeeze in here, to be perfectly honest with you, x is the midpoint of segment BC. And my reason that I should squeeze in there is also given. OK, so now that we have that, we can um, actually say that AX is congruent to itself. And that would be by the reflexive property. And because AX is congruent to itself, then that means that triangle ABC is congruent to, tri um, I'm sorry, not ABC. I said that wrong. That would be ABX is congruent to triangle ACX. And then that would be by side, side, side congruence. So where I'm going here is if I want to say that angle B is congruent to angle C, I want to use CPCTC. That means angle B is congruent to angle C by CPCTC. So what we've just proven is that if you have an isosceles triangle, these guys, the base angles, are going to be congruent. Okay, so here we have the converse of an isosceles triangle, which just switches the uh, hypothesis and the conclusion. So this guy says, if the angles are congruent, then we can draw the conclusion that the sides are also congruent. So before we said if the sides are congruent, then the angles are congruent. If the legs are congruent, then the base angles are congruent. Now we're saying if the base angles are congruent, then we can draw the conclusion that the sides are congruent. And we could do a similar proof to show that that's true as well. But you can use or apply either the converse or the isosceles triangle theorem. So here, in example one here, we're going to apply the, um, the isosceles triangle theorem. Because if we know that this is 22, and we know that these are equal, then we know that these base angles must also be equal because it's an isosceles triangle. Well, if we don't know the measure of them, we could say let the measure of angle D equal x degrees. And that would mean that the measure of angle F would also have to equal x degrees. Now, we know that our vertex angle is 22 degrees, and we know the sum of the angles in a triangle add to, two, uh, to 180. So we could say that means that 2x plus 22 equals 180. We could subtract 22 from both sides. And that would give us 2x is equal to 180 minus 20 would be 160 minus 2 more would be 158. And then divide both sides by 2. And then we would get x is equal to, what is it, 70, 79? I believe. 79, 79. Yep, 79. So that means the measure of angle F is 79 degrees. Now we can do something similar for this particular one. I'm probably not going to solve the entire thing, but we can definitely do something similar. Because we have an isosceles triangle, G and J are the base angles, and that means they are congruent. So now we're just going to say that 3x is equal to x plus 44. Circle that answer for up there. And then that would give us 2x is equal to 44. I actually can finish this. And then that would give us x is equal to 22. So if we're going to find the measure of angle G, the measure of angle G is x plus 44. So 22 plus 44. And that would get that the measure of angle G is equal to 66 degrees. And we've solved that one as well using the isosceles triangle theorem. So as a consequence to having something about isosceles triangles, because equilateral triangles are also isosceles, we have theorems for them as well. Or we call them corollaries, because they're a natural consequence to the isosceles triangle theorem. So what we're saying here is if a triangle is equal ang equilateral, then it's equiangular, meaning if all of these angles are equal, um, all of these sides are equal, excuse me, then all of the angles are also equal because the base angles would be equal 
and so they would be they would end up being um, 60 because all of the angles would have to add up to the same thing okay and then the corollary says if a triangle is equiangular then it's also equilateral which means that if all of the angles are the same then all of the side lengths are also the same now both of these corollaries again can be proven as a natural consequence from the isosceles triangle theorem and its converse so let's apply them so here we have an isosceles triangle and we want to find the value of x well if this angle L is 2x plus 32 then that means all of the angles are 2x plus 32 so we've got three of them we can say 3 times 2x plus 32 because this angle is congruent to this angle which is congruent to this angle and they have to add up to 180 so that gives us 2x plus 32 is equal to 60 which if we subtract 32 from both sides that gives us 2x is equal to 28 which gives us x is equal to 14 so we have found the value of x now to find the value of y we're going to use the converse of that corollary which says that if the angles are all equal then the sides are all congruent if the angles are all congruent then the sides are congruent if it's equiangular then it's equilateral if it's equilateral then it's equiangular so we can set these two sides equal to each other to find y we've got oh that should be 5y my bad 5y minus 6 equals 4y plus 12 subtract 4y on both sides and we get y minus 6 equals 12 and add 6 to both sides and we get y is equal to 18